Hi, welcome to our final video on simple linear regression. In this video we will be talking about performing forecasts, doing forecasting. We start this video by recalling the two main objectives of regressions. One was to establish if there were relationships between two variables, and the second one is to establish what we know about these relationships to forecast unobserved values. In this video we will be talking about this second objective. Let's recap our example. We had collected a sample of data from 40 families weekly income and consumption of a particular product. We had used this data to establish a relationship, we'll come back to this in a second, but we're going to be asking a new question now. What if we had the income of a 41st family, a family not in this sample, yet we do not observe the consumption of this family? Can we use the data from these 40 families to estimate or predict or forecast the consumption of this family? This is exactly what we will be doing throughout this video. We're going to be asking what is the expected consumption of a family with $100 of weekly income? Once again, this is a family for which we only observe the income data point, but we do not know and want to know its consumption. So what could we do about this? We had already ran a regression in which we had estimated the intercept and the slope of a model and concluded that for every $100 of income, on average, we would expect consumption to grow by $85. And we attained this by multiplying a given income by the slopes coefficient. We also answered a question if this relationship was statistically significant. We had done that by subtracting and adding two times the standard error of the income coefficient to the coefficient itself. And we had found that zero was not within this 95% confidence interval implying that we are very sure that there is a positive and statistically significant relationship between income and consumption. We had also checked the p-value of the income coefficient and found that it was very small. And a slow p-value implies that it is very unlikely that we would reject the null hypothesis that there were no relationship. In other words, we are very certain that there is a relationship. Now, what could we do with this output? Well, an initial approach to forecast this family's value is basically let's plug in the $100 of income in our model to see what consumption would we get. We had estimated a linear regression model that has a certain intercept and a slope that is multiplied by dx. In our particular case, we had estimated a slope of 0.85 and an intercept of 49. And we have on the right hand side a plot with a horizontal axis for income and a vertical axis for consumption. So what we would like to do is simply take this 100, which corresponds to our x value, and plug it in to see what consumption we get. Graphically, what we're doing is simply locating 100 in the horizontal axis, checking where it intersects the estimated line, and finding that it intersects the line at a value of 134.41 of consumption. And this would be what we call our point estimate or point forecast of consumption for a family with $100 of income. Now, how valid is this estimate? Let's recall how the observations looked and compare that to our estimated line. Remember that our 40 observations almost never lied over the blue line. Sometimes they're above, sometimes they are below and at different distances from the blue line. And this is because our model is based on a subsample and our coefficients are thus subject to uncertainty. So even though we know a family's income, we have certain uncertainty regarding its true consumption. What we know here is that the income is 100, but we really don't know which of all these possible lines here could be the correct one. We know that all of these could be because they are more or less close to where the 100 value intersects our estimate, but we're not really sure which of these could be the real value. What could we do about this? The safe bet and the best thing to do is to offer a confidence interval. So what we want to do is to offer an interval between which we know that the true value should lie and that it makes sense. And we need a certain confidence for this interval, so following what we had done before, 
we're going to be constructing a 95% confidence interval to claim, for example, that we believe with 95% certainty that the real income of this family lies between 126.94 to 141.87. And this would simply be the points where the $100 of income intersect not the center of our estimates, the point estimate, but rather the lower and upper bounds of the confidence interval. The next question, of course, will be, well, how do we construct this confidence interval? Remember that one of our metrics to evaluate the model's fit, which was how good a model fitted our reality, was the standard error of the regression. That overall is a measure of that that we cannot explain through our model, but that is occurring in reality. We can use this, and in the same way in which we constructed a confidence interval for the slope coefficient, we can construct a confidence interval for our estimate. And in this case, we had a standard error of the regression of 3.73. So how can we use this 3.73 to construct our confidence interval? It is very similar and analogous to what we had done before. The first thing we must do is compute the point forecast, which is going to be the center of our confidence interval. To do this, we do what we did in our first approach to forecasting, which was we substitute income for the observed value and obtain a point estimate for the unobserved value of consumption, which in this case was 134. Then we take the standard error of the regression and add it and subtract it two times to this point estimate. Specifically, we take the 134 and subtract two times the standard error of 3.73 this gives us the lower bound of our confidence interval. And then we take the same 134 and add two times the standard error to attain the upper bound of the confidence interval. And what we get is a 95% confidence interval for the consumption of a family with $100 of income that is going to be lying between 126 and 141. So let's summarize what we have learned in this video. First, we learned that we can use the observed values of the independent variable to forecast or estimate unobserved values of the dependent variable. Of course, before doing this, we must assess the validity of our model in being able to explain the variance in the dependent variable in the y. And we did this by means of the standard error of the regression or the r squared of the regression, as we learned in the previous video. Then we can use the estimates of our coefficients of the intercept and the slope to produce new values or estimated values of the dependent variable. And in statistical notation, we will generally use hats, in this case, beta sub zero hat and beta one hat, to be the estimates of our coefficients and y hat to be the predicted value of our dependent variable. Now, we already learned that since we're working with samples, we're dealing with uncertainty. So we never, and again, never, this is important, never want to report a point forecast. Rather, we understand that our estimates are subject to uncertainty and we will always report a confidence interval, in particular 95% confidence interval for a forecast. So never report a point estimate, always report a confidence interval. And constructing the confidence interval is very simple. We simply get the point estimate for the dependent variable, depending on the values of x that we do observe, and then add and subtract two times the standard error of the regression. And this will give us the 95% confidence interval for a forecast. Thank you.